Praise God. Good evening. Let's go, Lord, in prayer. Father God, we come to you in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, for the wonderful, mighty name of Jesus above every name. Rejoice in your holy presence, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you gave us Jesus, your only begotten Son, that we might have life and have more abundantly. We thank you, Lord, for our new covenant benefits you're revealing to us every day, that every day we're learning more about who we are in Christ Jesus and what Jesus did for us through his death, burial, and resurrection. Thank you, Father God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Okay, let's turn our Bibles here to the first book of 1 Peter. And we'll read here in 1 Peter chapter 2. Now the scripture says here in verse 24. Who his own self bear our sins, his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin should live unrighteous, by whose stripes you were healed. Now think about this. This puts our healing in the past tense. When it says here, by whose stripes ye were healed. Words past tense, and we know that, and heals past tense. Now that informs us because many of us believe that we'd get healed someday, always trying to get it. And not only that, uh, then we'd hear, well, if you don't get healed now, you get healed and you get to heaven. But this helps us to know that all Jesus took our sins on the cross, so we're not waiting to become, become forgiven. We're already forgiven. You know, over here in, uh, in Colossians chapter 2, the scripture says here, In verse 13, Colossians 2, And you being dead in your sins, uncircumcised your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. So this scripture tells us here, along with the other ones, that we've been forgiven of all trespasses. Now we I, you know, we kind of had the idea, or we wrote in there with our little religious pencil or pen, that that meant our past sins. But no, Jesus paid the sin price once and for all. Remember there in, in John 9, 19, verse 30, Jesus said it is finished when he hung on the cross just before he gave up the ghost. Well, Jesus took the sins of the world. And there in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, the scripture says in verse 19, that God's not imputing our trespass against us. Now, that sounds far-fetching because we've always been trying to get, get forgiven, you know, and, and get healed. I mean, most of us, you know, what little bit of knowledge we had about Jesus, we were trying to become forgiven. Maybe by doing good things and promising God we wouldn't do this again. And then also, if something came, you know, hoping that someday we'd get healed. Now, we need to build, build from the fact that, that J Jesus already took our sins. He already took the curse upon him. He already took our sicknesses upon him. And, we, and let's build from there. That's a, that's a more fir firm foundation. And not look so much at ourselves, but look what Jesus did for us. And where we're going to do that is by promises in God's Word. Those exceedingly great and precious promises revealed to us what God's will is for our life. And there's always been arguments in the church, you know, ever since I've been born again, that, you know, what is God's will for your life? And, you know, is it God's will to heal you or not? Is it God's will that, um, you know, you prosper and get a better job? I mean, maybe it's not God's will. No, God wants us to prosper and he wants us good health. And he told us. Remember there in 3 John, our favorite scripture, he said there, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health. Is that soul prosper? So we, we build from that. We, we know that God wants us to be prosperous. And we know, that according to the word, we are prosperous. Not spiritually. We're talking about I'm talking about finances, money-wise. Wealth and riches in our life. Because we're an heir of Abraham's blessing. That's not something we're going to get when we get to heaven. This is something we have now. Not only Jesus redeemed the curse of the law, but thank God for that, but he made us an heir of Abraham's blessing. And we're joint heirs of Christ Jesus. All the Father has belongs to us. And God sees us as though we've never sinned. And God sees us righteous now. He sees us holy, sanctified, because the Word says so. He sees us complete. He sees us perfected, perfect in other words. He sees us faultless and, uh, faultless and flawless in our life. Sanctified, because the Word says so. Unblameable, unreprovable, in God's sight. And we need to begin to see ourselves that way. And, oh, you know, this is something we probably got to remind ourselves every day until we really become, it becomes just a normal way of lifestyle. That we always see ourselves as righteous before God, right with God, justified with God, our Father God. Not trying to be, you know, not trying to clean up our life and then God was going to bless us. Now, we're always going to be, you know, tweaking our mind and, and our body, you know, whether we do things in the natural, exercise, you know, gain the knowledge of what we need to gain the knowledge of, of course, of God's Word. But our spirit man, the real us, is cleansed and covered and perfect in Christ Jesus. And we need to see ourselves that way. 
than anything else is going on in this natural world. We can know that God wants to take care of it. He's already purchased our redemption. He's already blessed us with all spiritual blessings. We already have the blessing of Abraham upon us. We're not trying to get it. What we want to do is just become open to God to receive more from God. It's kind of easy to get caught up in, I don't know, our church or denomination. Thank God for all this. But it, you know, we kind of get, only believe what they believe or only know what they know. No, we need to always, and thank God for what they know. Thank God for what we know. But we need to be increasing that knowledge and learn more, asking God to show us. That's where those scriptures in Ephesians 1 and 3 come in. We're, at, we're praying and asking God to, the eyes of understanding and be enlightened. And we pray those prayers over ourselves. We pray those prayers over our loved ones and, you know, other Christians. You know, we, we have in our heart that we want their eyes to be opened up also. Ministers, you know, we need to be praying for ministers. Their eyes be open. The more the minister knows, the more they can help you and I out. I mean, you want every minister to, to receive in revelation knowledge all the time. I want to know what the latest is that God's revealed to people from the scriptures. You know, this is amazing. You can read scriptures for years, and then all of a sudden you see something you never saw any before in that one verse of scripture. Maybe because you heard someone preaching. So we need to pray for our ministers, all the ministers. Every minister we want to be praying for that we know. That, that they grow and develop spiritually. And not only that, but their eyes are standing and being light. That they receive fresh revelation in eyes of God's word and tell us. This is, you know, what we need to do as believers. I can remember in Bible school, we'd get together in somebody's apartment. Maybe somebody had a loaf of bread, and someone had some chips, and someone had some mayo, and someone had some tuna. That's kind of what it was. we make tuna sandwiches and eat chips, and we're all interrupting each other. It was just like one big slumber party. All of us getting together in somebody's apartment, so excited about God's Word, and what, and what we've been taught from God's Word. We're interrupting each other. We'll wait till you hear about this. Wait till you hear this story. And I heard, you know, and people bring up what this minister said and what that minister said. We're in a great time. You know, we're, we're learning more. And that's how we want to be, be as, a, as a body of Christ. Not jealous, not envious, because someone got it before us. But we all we can learn from one another. You know, when we hear someone sharing scriptures, it's like our ears pick up, pick up right now. You know, we want to hear what they've got to say about that scripture. Not act like, oh, yeah, I know that scripture. i got to memorize. No, that's not going to help us. Just stay open. You remember there in Proverbs chapter 4, we often read there in verse 20, My son, attend to my words, incline to my sayings, let them not depart my eyes, keep them in its heart, for the life of those that find them. See, we need to be finding promises in God's word and, and receiving revelation from God's word. And guard our heart from any doubt and unbelief and anything would try to rob us of the blessings of God. That's what that verse 23 is going to teach us, that we diligently keep our heart, guard our heart, and guard our minds from this stuff. Because as soon as you hear some great promise from God's Word, and they're all great, as soon as you hear like healing, then someone comes along and tries to instruct you what it really means. It's amazing we get these people in the body of Christ that want to tell us what God really means. And then when you find out about prosperity, you get all excited about that. Now, thank God I can start believing God, that God wants me to have more than enough and abundant life and prosperity, and wealth and riches in my house, and that he wants me self-sufficient, possessing enough to acquire no age support and furnish abundance for every good work and charitable donation like the Amplified says. Hey, praise God. We get all excited about that. Can't wait to tell the people because we can't keep our mouths shut. We find out exciting news from God, from his word. And we go share it with someone else thinking they're going to jump on board with this and probably know something that I don't know about it. And, oh, boy. Then they, you, they, they have that look in their eyes and their face think, uh oh, something's wrong here. How many times have you met a total stranger, found out they were born again, thought you could start talking about the Lord, and bingo, they brought up what church you go to. Now, you know no matter what you say, it's not going to be the right answer. And it's just like that's the, it, that's it. And, you, and then, you know, well, I mean, this guy, it was so thrilled, and, and I met this Christian, and we were talking, you know, and we, I'm, I'm just glad that I found somebody to talk to. I didn't know anybody around the area, in, or at least in that neighborhood, and I ran across this guy. In fact, I heard he'd been, he was born again. Well, you know, I said, hey, praise God, and he started talking like that, and he goes, how was you water baptized? I know whatever the answer is, it's going to be wrong, and he's going to be the one that's right, I mean, it, we right away, you got some division is going to be here. And I tried to, t you know, tap dance around it. And then, uh, how does your church take communion? Oh, boy. It's whatever it is, it's going to be wrong. <laughs> well, you know, that's, you know, like the world say, the fly in the ointment. But, no, I mean, we, run, we kind of like to stay on the stuff we can all agree about. But the point is, I was just excited that I met another Christian. People talked to him about the Lord. And 
talk to them about Jesus, you know, and get, get excited about it. I never met these people. One time I was down in Florida and what these guys are building these new apartments and stuff. And I started talking to them, found out they're born again. And so, man, I'm just having a great time talking to a couple of them there. And here comes this guy walking up and says, uh, what are you doing? Oh, I said, well, we're just talking, you know, talking about the Lord. And he was a Christian, born again. The guy saying this to me, he says, now, what are you trying to do these guys? I go, we're just kind of fellowshipping, you know. Uh, you know, and he, are, are you trying to take those from our church and whatever? <laughs> I thought, you caught me. No, I, you see, some people are just that way. And, you know, God bless everybody. And thank God they are blessed. We love everybody. But, you know, you have this hunger inside your heart for fellowship around people that speak the word, talk your language, and believe way you believe and know something that you don't know that they're going to share with you not not to put you in bondage but to set you free it's like some people you run across they want to put you in bondage here you're believing god that you're delivered from it you're free from these things i'm when i tell this guy i haven't been water baptized it's going to be wrong when i tell this person about well, church i go to it's going to be wrong it's just that you know good and well this is the way they ask you you know, and you'll see people come up to some ministry of the church, and maybe they're just a visitor that time at that service, and they'll come up and they got their Bible open. And here this person may spend an hour and a half teaching God's Word. And they walk, here comes this total stranger walking. What about this verse right here? Well, you know when they start this tapping, it's um, it's not going to be happy stuff. They're just, they're just, you know. I'm doing this meeting in Boston, that was Cambridge. Cambridge and uh, at the Best Western Hotel. And there was just three Business, look like business guys in the back row suits all you know and just sat through the whole service like this looking at me you know teaching okay no problem so after service over they walked up to me and says uh, I just want you to know do you believe what Kenneth Copeland believes I said brothers what are you doing this for I mean you just sit there and listen an hour an hour and a half of teaching God's Word and you're waited through the whole service you came to the meeting to find out what I believe and what he believes really you want to spend your life that way but see, people get that way. And you know what? I'm just going to tell you, that's just the miserable spirit that you got. I don't know if anybody's told you this before, but that's not going to go over. That's not going to help you out. Huh? I've probably been saved longer than you have been. Been around a few people. That's not going to help you out at all. Maybe your pastor or somebody should have told you this a long time ago. So I'm going to tell you, okay? That's not going to help out. That's not a, that's, so it's going to be, the bottom line is going to be so in discord. I'm talking about sharing the word because you're excited about it. Okay, you're not out to correct the whole body of Christ, let us know we're all wrong. Hey, maybe we are wrong about something. Why don't you just pray their eyes be opened up, we'll be as smart as you are. But see, people get that way in the body of Christ. And they're going to get that way about three things. Healing, speaking in tongues, and prosperity. Now, who thinks behind all that? The people criticize tongues, they don't speak in tongues. The people criticize healing, they haven't been healed of anything. The people that talk, talk against prosperity, they're broke. You know, they don't make enough money now. And so they decided that's how you're supposed to live. You know, I'm not gonna live the way the Apostle Paul lived. I got a family. I got more things involved here. You know, he lived to follow Paul. Paul had to follow God for himself. Peter had to follow God. Every minister is different. Every person is different. I'm not gonna be like Peter. I'm not gonna be like Paul. I'm not gonna be like James. I'm gonna be like John. I'm gonna be like Jesse Rich. And I hope you're like who you are because God made him say, we don't need another Paul. We need each person to be the, who themselves are. We have one Jesus who is perfect, and what he did for us, I'm going to receive from it. Now, whether other people did receive or not, that's none of my business. That's between them and God. But God, you see, there was people that did not receive their deliverance. You know, they rejected it in Hebrews chapter 11. Think about this, you know. It was offered to them by the Spirit of God, by God. But they chose not to, and that's their choice. You know, that's between them and God. But just because some people didn't receive something has nothing to do with me. I mean, I know friends of mine that when I got born again, they, they didn't want to receive Jesus, and they still have wanted to. That's between them and God. But that wasn't going to keep me from receiving Jesus. When people told me at my church, I didn't need to receive Jesus. You don't need to do that. You're already okay. That's the only time they ever told me I was okay. So what? If they don't receive Jesus, that's between them and God. And pray for people? Of course we do. I, pray, I spend a little bit of time in prayer. And the more time you spend with God, the more you're going to have illumination from God's Word. 
but people are around just to cause problems and that's just the way they are you know they cause problems and that's just the way they are and you know why haters are haters and they cause discord and cause division you just keep praising God thanking God and thanking God for who you are and you know when I'm teaching you don't need to comment you just need to just listen to what I've got to say just think about what you're what you're hearing take God's Word and apply it to your life and don't worry about what other people do and what other people don't do speak God's Word claim God's promises and get you keep growing yourself you keep developing yourself you keep walking in who you are in Christ Jesus and let the Holy Spirit use you and of course you can tweak yourself and get yourself better in the natural of things and improve your lifestyle absolutely but when you're when you become born again you're in Christ Jesus you're a new creature in Christ Jesus you're you're, you're complete the Bible says in Colossians chapter 2 verse 10 so there's always people coming around that's going to try in the body tries to try to get you complete you know if you if you get rid of these few things you got in your life and then you're going to please God then you're going to get your blessing well that's not how it works he's already given us our blessings there's nothing that God hasn't already done that belongs to us in Christ Jesus that he hadn't only already hadn't already freely given it to us he's given us all things pertaining to life and God he's not going to do that someday when we get our life together you couldn't be good enough and you, you don't go out and clean up your life and then come and get saved the greatest gift of me is receiving else you don't go out and try to become better maybe God to heal you or better maybe God to prosper you we've already been given the prosper we've already been given healing we've already been given deliverance we're not going to get it someday when God gets ready and see people come along and try to tell you that you know if you do these three things then God will bless you or you get that stupid demon possessed email that sending all the people and God will bless you we're already blessed we're not trying to get blessed We've already been given everything God has, physically, financially, emotionally, socially, spiritually. All the Father has is given, He's already given it to us. We're an heir of Abraham's blessing. And it belongs to us in Christ Jesus. What we have to do is, how do we get saved? We receive salvation by faith in Jesus' name. We're saved by grace through faith. How do we receive everything else? It's by faith. Healing is by faith. Divine health is by faith. Knowing who you are in Christ Jesus, you receive that by faith. You begin to create and declare that you're, this is who you are in Christ Jesus. you got some things going on in your life you're not supposed to do. Then start asking God to help you and start to create and declare and you're delivered in Christ Jesus. But you can't be good enough to get God to heal you. You can't be good enough and then God will give you a blessing. Like people want to pass, you know, want us to pass on emails. The other dear people, and God will bless you. Those are people that know nothing about who they are in Christ Jesus. Or, you know, something bad will happen to you if you don't do this. Nothing's bad is going to happen to me in Jesus' name because I'm redeemed the curse of law. I got divine protection in Jesus' name. I will save the Lord. He's my refuge, my fortune, my God. I will save. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Whatever I do will prosper. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be as made, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yeah, I'll help thee. I'll uphold thee with right hand righteous. Behold, all they were sensed against thee, shame found to be as nothing. That sharp shall perish. We got scriptures of divine protection, but they have to come out your mouth. John just said, oh, yeah, I believe in protection. Well, good. That's a, that's a start. But you want those scriptures coming out your mouth. The Bible is voice activated. That's how you got born again. You, you used your voice to receive Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. And all these blessings are voice activated. The righteous man speaks, the Bible says, in Romans chapter 10, verse 6. So what we're going to do is we're going to speak. Speak God's word. Say what God's word says about us. And decree and declare what God's word says about us. And just keep on speaking God's word and saying that's holding fast our confession of faith. How, how do we hold fast our confession of faith? By constantly saying what God's word says about us. Not letting go of it. Decree and declaring. Himself took my infirmities, bear my sickness, by his stripes I'm healed. Christ has redeemed the curse of the law, being made a curse for me, for his written curse, serving the tree, that the blessed of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promised spirit through faith. And if you be Christ, verse 29, of Galatians 3, if you be Christ, if you belong to him, then you're Abraham's seed and heirs according to promise. Everything God gave Abraham, he gave He gave the church through Jesus Christ. We weren't Jewish, you know. We were Gentiles when we got born again. So that blessing was upon the Jewish people. And Jesus gave it to us. And that was all material, physical blessings. So we got the new birth in our new covenant. We got the spirit of God dwelling inside of us. They didn't have that. We, we can receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, speak in tongues. They didn't have that. 
So we have we have a blessing that, that Adam and Eve didn't have. We got Spirit of God dwelling inside of us once we receive Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior. So we got something better than Abraham had. And we got a better covenant than the Old Testament people have. Theirs is based on their performance. They do this, they get blessed. Ours isn't based on our performance. Ours isn't based on our behavior. Ours isn't based on our conduct. Ours isn't based on good works. Ours isn't based on anything we do. Ours is based on Jesus and Jesus only and nothing else. We could not be good enough to get God to bless us. First of all, he's already blessed us. He has nothing left. He gave us everything when he gave us Jesus. If he didn't withhold Jesus, the Bible says in Romans 8, verse 32, he's not going to withhold anything else. It's people that tell us if we do things, then the blessing will come. We don't do nothing to get the blessing to come. It's already been given to us. It belongs to us. Like your both hands belong to you. They're not going to come to you someday. They belong to you. What we need to do is receive what Jesus has done. The world needs to receive Jesus Christ as Lord. And not, they don't realize that God's not imputing their trespass. He's not adding them up. He put all the curse, all the wrath of God, all the sins upon Jesus. If a person will simply receive Jesus Christ as Lord, they'll never face the wrath of God, the Bible says. Now, if they reject it and die without Christ, now they're going to have to pay it penalty for the sins they committed the sin of not receiving jesus christ as lord that's the sin god can't forgive he's forgiven everything else but the sin that god can't forgive is the sin of not receiving jesus christ as lord because when a person doesn't receive jesus as lord they don't receive a pardon or forgiveness of their sins and sin has to be judged and jesus was our judgment the soul that sinneth died that's why jesus died he took the curse upon him he took the wrath of god the punishment to, for sin upon him. Now he took our sins, he took our punishment. The chastise our peace upon him was, was upon him. That's the that word is punishment was upon him in Isaiah 53, verse 4 and 5. Jesus took our punishment to sin, and thank God he did. But Christians don't know that, so they still think they're maybe being punished for their sin. And we shouldn't have sinned, and we're not to sin. We already know that. People don't need to tell us that. We know that. We knew that before we got saved, most of us. But we need to realize is that the way out of these problems is begin to create and declare who we are in Christ. The best thing to say about sin is I'm the righteous of God in Christ. And the best thing to say about condemnation, there's no condemnation unless you're in Christ Jesus. And I refuse that guilt in Jesus' name. You have to stand against guilt and condemnation because those dudes are killers. They'll rob you of your joy and victory and they'll try to persuade you the reason you don't have this because look at something you did. No, we look at Jesus, what he did. He's our perfect performance. Your perfect, your performance is never going to be perfect. And I believe in really trying. I think I could prove it. But it's not based on us. It's based on Jesus and Jesus only. What he did. His behavior is perfect. He was the one that never sinned. He's the one that lived the perfect life. So we look at him and we follow him. And we look to him and just believe that, hey, this is what he said. This is what I'm going to do. And that's why we have those scriptures in Ephesians. All the Bible's God's word from Genesis to Revelation. But the difference is one day Jesus came. And when Jesus came, he took the curse of the mankind upon him on the cross. That's why he was crucified. It was a curse to be crucified. John the Baptist, they cut off his head. Other people were stoned to death. Prophets were stoned to death. But what, why was Jesus crucified? And there was other people crucified. Many people were crucified. But Jesus crucified to take the curse of mankind. And he took our sins upon him. And the judgment of sin upon him. He gave his life for us. Why is Jesus different than anybody else? Because Jesus is the only one that never did sin. And he took our sins upon him. Our sins had to be paid for. So what God did is he put our sins upon Jesus Christ. And that's why we need Jesus in our life. Why is Jesus different than any other religion that doesn't believe in him and has some other form of how they worship? Because Jesus is God's only begotten Son that He gave to take the sins of the world. No one else in the history of the world took our sins except Jesus Christ. He's the only one that did. He's the only one that could because He's the only one that never sinned. He was born of a virgin. And there was a reason for that. There was going to be no sin contamination in His blood. And that's why Jesus offered up. And people in the world don't understand that. You know, come on, I grew up in church and probably didn't understand it. But that's why Jesus came. That's why. Why is Jesus different than anybody else? because he took our sins and he did this because he loved us and when a person knows that receives that forgiveness they, then they can you know their life can be better you know we do stuff wrong every day even trying or doing our best you know and you know it's just the way we are 
so what that the Bible says in first John uh, 1 7 his blood is cleansing us constantly present tense so it's kind of like wars in the wash cycle you know you and I can think of the big sins we committed today or whenever maybe we lied to some and we're not to lie we all know this okay and you know thank God we're delivered from lying but let's say we lied to, I lied today let's say okay now I would know to ask God forgive me that probably before I go to bed tonight and say God forgive me lying to guys that get down to gas station I should have done that Lord you know or I get ticked off and told somebody off God you know I, I ask you forgive me I, that's not a Christian I, I'm, I'm not walking in love I've been doing a lousy job lately well, I've, I've been yelling and screaming and whatever okay so those are things we remember no, those you know it makes us feel better when we ask God to forgive us when we go to him and we all do this you know we go to God about something but there's there's no way in the world you and I can remember everything we did how about just a little thing maybe thinking evil of someone on the way to work today well we're not to think that way or think of a woman we know adultery is wrong what happens if I thought about a woman today in a sexual way well Jesus taught us that when you do that you committed adultery now not not in our minds we think the worst thing is you commit adultery with the lady but no see just thinking on him so he's showing us and he showed those people then you're gonna need a savior you're not gonna be able to keep the law no one kept it it was from God the law was holy but it couldn't make you holy because no one could keep it so that's why we needed Jesus to come and give his life for us and most of us didn't even know that we just we, we went to church we went to mass thank God for it and got as close to God as we could you know and reverenced it and we should have but there was there was something that Jesus did for us that many of us didn't know and he took our punishment to sin so God's not punishing you today for something you did wrong Jesus took that now we do stuff wrong with people okay we suffer consequences that's that's with the people and the law you know break the law and all this. so we have to ask God for mercy on that right and if we do stuff wrong with the people then we can suffer conference consequences of them but with God he's forgiven us and many times we don't see ourselves that way and that hinders us from receiving God or something bad happens like a friend of mine says Jesse I, you know you don't know what I've done and that's why I'm suffering today now see what he thinks is that God's doing this to him because of stuff he's done now here's a guy that goes to mass regularly ask God forgive him but still can't forgive himself and we've all had probably stuff like that you know we think well of course this happened because of what it did and that's not true maybe it should have happened for what we did yeah maybe God should have but he put all that upon Jesus and that's why we have those those epistle letters to reveal to us what Jesus did for us and we need to get that inside of our heart and get inside of our mind that we begin to see ourselves that way and if some of us you know it's taken a long time just to believe God for forgiven you know because we think about what we've done you know you start thinking about your life oh, well, let's say this if I start thinking about my life what I've done I mean it's hopeless what I've done that's why I need God's mercy and God's grace and you know what I've done wrong with people it's terrible you know but the thing is you pray to God they forgive me but I have to know that God has forgiven me and there's no condemnation no guilt because what condemnation and guilt does is talk you in to not receive from God because look what you did when those thoughts come to us we need to look what Jesus did that's why when you you see the crucifixion it's reminding you he hung on the cross and he's there and in, in Catholic churches they have the crucifixion Protestant churches have the cross and understand both of them. The, the, the Catholic Church wants you to know that Jesus did this for you the Protestant Church is trying to tell you that he's no longer on the cross you know that he's he's in heaven okay so so we need to remind yourself that what Jesus went through the beating he went through the crucifixion he went through he did this all for us this is all God's plan he had this all planned before Adam and Eve sinned the Bible says so so we need to realize God wasn't taken off you know God didn't know this is gonna happen God had to come up plan B no he already knew what he was gonna do he's gonna send Jesus and Jesus came we might have laughed and more abundantly so just remember that father God we pray tonight we thank Lord for each dear person receives from you whatever they need by decree and declare they're healed and delivered by the blood of Jesus you know here in Romans chapter 10 the Bible says here in verse 9 and verse 10 and verse 13 have you ever asked Jesus to come in your heart you know maybe you didn't believe in God well you know you can ask God to show himself to you so God do you know I hear people talk about that you exist if you do show me that you do to bring me to you now here in Romans chapter 10 verse 9 10 and 13 says that if thou shalt confess thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe not God's raised dead thou shalt be saved 
For at the heart man believes righteousness, and with the mouth faith means salvation. Verse 13 says, For whosoever calls the name of the Lord shall be saved. So let's pray this prayer together. God, I come here to receive Jesus Christ as my Lord. I believe in my heart, and I confess in my mouth what you said here, that Jesus Christ hung on a cross, was crucified, took my sins, took my pun punishment to sin, and died. And God, you raised him to the dead, and Jesus is alive today. And I ask you, Jesus, come to my heart. I confess you as my Lord right now. I confess Jesus is my Lord. And God, I thank you now, you're my Heavenly Father. I give my life to you, use my life for you, and make me a blessing to you and others. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. If you're ready to pray, I'd like to hear from you. You can email me at jesserichministries.com. If you're enjoying these messages here on Facebook and YouTube, share them with someone else. If you've got a prayer request, you can contact me at jesserichministries.com. Enjoyed being with you tonight. And thank God he's able to tune in. I'm considered a holy honor. Till next time, it's Brother Rich Mine. We love you, praying for you. Remember, Jesus is always more than enough.